Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over a fix for all of your AI traffic problems coming up next on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Acknowledge, please. Acknowledge, please. Where are you? It's okay, Jack. It's not okay. I got a small plane here. I don't know where it is. Jack, a fly landed on your screen. Welcome back, everyone. Before we get started in today's video, I first want to go over what I'm talking about by AI traffic. So the default ATC traffic engine inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator is what directs and guides all of the ground and air AI traffic. Now that's also going to include if you're using AIG or FSLTL live traffic. These are importing all of the live traffic into Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it's relying on the default ATC engine to direct and guide all of this traffic. Now, as you know, once we start importing a ton of new traffic, the InSim ATC kind of goes a little bonkers. So a fantastic developer has created two applications that can be found on FlightSim.to that can help take care of and iron out a lot of these issues. So now that you understand that, let's hop into today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. And if the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All the links for today's video will be down in the description, so be sure to check that out. Over on FlightSim.to, you need to download two different applications. The first one is going to be the AI Flow application, and this will take care of all of the traffic that is in the air. The second application is AI Ground, and this is going to take care of all the traffic on the ground. Both of these applications are external applications to Microsoft Flight Simulator and do not have to be put inside the community folder. So now we need to download both of these applications by hitting the download button and then you're going to extract both of the zip files and place them on your desktop. Once you have downloaded and installed both of these applications, you'll be left with two folders on your desktop just like this. We're going to start with the AI ground application on the left so we can double click that to open. At the very bottom we have the readme first text and I highly recommend to read that first before moving on in the tutorial. Next what I like to do for both AI ground and AI flow is to create a shortcut on your desktop or in the taskbar to make it easier when we want to launch the applications in the future. To do that we can highlight the application drag and drop it to our taskbar, and you will see the icons populate down here below. Before we jump into any of the configuration settings, we first need to know what these settings actually do. So we have the readme document here, we're going to double click on that to open the PDF file. This developer for the application has created a fantastic PDF file that specifically goes over each individual setting that we can adjust. Before you do that though, I highly recommend to read the introduction and overview usage before you move down into adjusting any of the parameters. Once you have that done and you're ready to start adjusting some of the settings, you can move down to the options section in the PDF file and then we're going to open up the configuration file over here on the right. To do that we can highlight the AI ground config file, right click and then open it with the editor of your choice. Once you have the AI ground configuration file open, all of our adjustable parameters will be down here in blue. You'll notice at the top here we have some important information to remove the two forward slashes that are in front of each of the parameters that we wish to adjust. By removing these two forward dashes we'll activate each of these parameters. So we'll go through each of these and remove all of the forward dashes all right, so now that we have that done, we can use the PDF document over here on the left to go through each of the settings that we can configure. I'm not going to go through each of these. It would take way too long to do that, but we're going to go ahead and pick the first one here, which is the AI pushback hold time. The default is set at 40 seconds. So all we're going to do is come over to the config file and look for AI pushback hold time. And you'll see here that it is set for 40 seconds. So what does the AI pushback hold time do? This is extra time that the AI will be held on the tarmac after pushback 
in order to achieve a more realistic pushback. So once you go through each of these options and set each one according to what you would like, then you want to make sure that you go up to the file section and save all of the configuration settings. Once you're done with that, we can now close out of the configuration file and we no longer need the PDF. We can close out of that as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the AI flow application. So we're going to left click there, open the readme document. Again, I highly recommend to go through the introduction and usage overview first. It has a lot of very good information as well as some hidden things that you're not going to know about unless you read them. Once you finish going through that, then we can move down to the options section to where we can start adjusting some of the settings. Next, we're going to open the configuration file. So we're going to left click on it and then right click to open with our editor of choice. You'll notice that this configuration file is very similar to the AI ground config file. And you're going to need to go through and remove all of those forward slashes in front of the parameters that you wish to tweak. Then we can use the PDF document over here on the left to adjust each of these individual settings. Again, I'm not going to go through each of these settings, so let's just take the first one. That's going to be AI arrival spacing 3.0 nautical miles. So we'll come over here to the PDF document, find AI arrival spacing. So what does the AI arrival spacing actually do? Well, this spacing value is for final approach at typical final approach speeds. Thus, AI flow may enforce higher separations when the AI are farther away, and especially if the AI are approaching at significantly different speeds. Both of these applications work together. Well, you know, there's no I in the word team. So what you may change in one may affect the other one. So keep that in mind when you're adjusting these settings. But as you can see, this is a very intuitive program and really adjust things based upon what is happening in the sim. So now once you have gone through and adjusted all of the different settings inside of the configuration file, then we just need to again go to the top, hit the save, and we are all set to go. Now you can run these applications whenever you want. You can even start them before you log into the sim. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to end us for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.